super ultra definitions of research stuff. Yeah! So this is a broad overview of lots of definitions and lots of different concepts. And we will hit many of these multiple times. But I am going to introduce them to you now. And a lot of these will appear totally out of context and that's okay. I'm kind of sort of priming you for when it comes. And they will make a lot more sense as we go. So I suggest you memorize these. Might even help to like make note cards or something and go all old school. So now, in rapid fire, variable. A characteristic that varies across people. Might be gender, might be height. Treatment versus control group, bicep circumference. So now let's test your understanding. Speed of light, is that a variable? No, because it doesn't vary. It is a constant and a constant is opposite of a variable. One's political opinion. Yes, because not everybody in the world has the exact same political opinion. Because people vary in their political views, that is a variable. Species among a sample of humans. Well, guess what? If you have a sample of humans, they are all human. Their species is the same. It is a constant. It is not a variable. You got it? We good? Second definition, quantitative or a numeric variable. This is a variable that is assigned a value using a meaningful number. For example, height in inches is a numeric variable. So is weight, which is the number of pounds. What about bank account number? Yeah, it's a number, but it's not measuring anything. If my account number is one, two, three, four, five, that number doesn't really mean anything except it helps identify what my account is. It's not like I have one, two, three, four, five of something. Make sense? So let's test your knowledge. Bank account balance. Yes, that is a number. Because if I have $55 in my account, that 55 means something. It is referring to the amount of money I have. I'd be dirt poor if I had $55. Marital status. Not a numeric variable. Why? Because married or single is not a number. Pregnant. Is that a numeric variable? No, it is a categorical variable, which is the next definition. A categorical variable is a variable that is measured by assigning a label, like gender, male or female, political affiliation, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, and sometimes the labels themselves are numbers, like in the bank account example. Or maybe in your data set, you decide that males are one and females are two. So even though these examples have numbers assigned to them, those numbers don't actually mean anything. So because females are two and males are one, does that mean females are twice as something is males? No, it's just an arbitrary number, but we still call them categorical variables. So now let's test your knowledge. Mile time, is that a categorical variable? No, because the time actually refers to a quantity of some sort, making it a numeric variable. Preferred method of exercise, say weightlifting versus aerobic. That is a categorical variable. Favorite color, also a categorical variable. Next, operational definition. An operational definition is the way in which a variable is measured, and they must be very specific and easily agreed upon. Because oftentimes in psychology, the things that we want to measure, it's not very clear exactly how we measure those things. So we create operational definitions to make them easier to work with. Examples, depression. How do you measure depression? One operational definition might be your score on a depression scale. Or let's say you want to measure happiness. You can measure happiness by the number of times somebody smiles in a day. That may be a crappy definition of happiness, but it is an operational definition. Or let's say you want to define social media engagement. How do you do that? You might decide to measure it as the number of times somebody posts in a day or in a week. So that's an operational definition. Next, population. The population is the entire group you want to generalize your results to. For example, in my experiment on the plants, I didn't really care about those specific seeds. I wanted to know if soil blocks stunted the growth of any possible seed I could plant. That was my population. Any possible seed or any seed that I might ever want to plant. About a third of the way through, you ready? Sample, a sample is a subset of the population that the researcher actually has access to and studies. In my example, my sample was the 80 seeds that I happened to pick. Representative sample, if the sample resembles a population, we call it a representative sample. For example, if they did an approval rating of President Trump based on a survey of Fox News readers, that is not going to be representative because the type of people who read Fox News tend to like Trump. On the other hand, if you use a random phone dialer or something, that will probably be more likely to be representative. Next, simple random sample. A simple random sample means that every single person in the population has an equal probability of being selected. In my previous definition, I talked about a random phone dialer. Let's say you don't even own a phone. What's your probability of being sampled? Zero. 
Let's say you have five different phone numbers. What's your probability of being selected? A whole lot higher than somebody who only has one phone number. So that is not a simple random sample, but it's pretty close. Convenience sample. A convenient sample happens when people are selected because they are willing and able to participate. Problem is that these people may not reflect the characteristics of the population. Independent variable. This is the variable that the experimenter manipulates. In the case that I talked about before, soil block versus not. That is the variable that was manipulated by me. Dependent variable or outcome variable. That is the variable that is measured after one manipulates the independent variable. In my case, that was plant growth. Confound. A confound is an alternative explanation of the experimental results. I concluded that there was no difference between the compacted versus the non-compacted soil. But let's say that there is a difference and that loose soil is actually better. So I made a false conclusion. And maybe the reason that I didn't see a difference is because I put all the soil blocks in the greenhouse and all the non-soil blocks under a grow light. Well, let's say that the greenhouse has more light. So the soil blocks get a boost that the non-soil Soil blocks don't get. And so you might have seen a difference if they had the same amount of light, but because they had different amounts of light, it gave the soil blocks a boost. And so it's a wash. Now I didn't actually do that, but if that did happen, then light would be a confound. Extraneous variables. These are characteristics that vary between participants that are not of interest. So in my example, different things that might vary between soil blocks is the amount of vermiculite used, or the amount of fertilizer used, or the amount of light that happens to fall on that one soil block. These things are gonna vary from block to block, and I don't really care about those, but they're gonna make a difference. And so what's gonna happen is they're gonna make the results a little more noisy, a little harder to detect, but that's exactly what happens in experiments. Sometimes we can't control extraneous variables and you just have to live with them. Laboratory versus field research. Laboratory research is research that is done in a highly controlled setting. For example, having participants sit in front of a computer in a lab in the same chair, in the same lighting conditions, same temperature, same everything. Whereas field research, is research that is done in a naturalistic setting. For example, you might study the behavior of individuals as they're riding on a subway. Internal validity. We're gonna have an entire video on internal validity. But in short, validity means truthfulness. Internal validity refers to the degree to which the causal claims the researcher makes about their study are actually true. In my study, I concluded that compaction did not make a difference in the plant growth. Was that conclusion the right conclusion to make? That's an internal validity question. And finally, external validity. External validity asks whether the results found in this study can be generalized to other situations or other people. So in my study, I might want to know whether the results about lettuce seeds can be generalized to pumpkin seeds or tomato seeds or growing conditions in the South or growing conditions in the West. Those are external validity types of questions. So yeah, you should be able to identify all those things and be able to define them and stuff. And remember them. And be able to explain them and stuff. But we are gonna revisit them throughout the semester. But I'm also, at this point, going to assume that you already know what all those things mean. So with that, I'm not gonna review our learning objectives because it was just definitions. And that's what I did the entire video. So just watch the video again. So with that, peace out.